So now that we're in the new year, I've been playtesting a lot of games with a lot of publishers and thinking about what makes games excellent. How do I script the feedback that I give? Where is the difference between games I'm excited to cover here on the channel and games that maybe I do a preview of, I think there's an audience for, but they're not the best things I've ever played. And then games that I really, I just turned down. I'm just not willing to uh, to share with the audience because there is a determination there. And uh, one of the elements that I found that I've been bringing up time and time again uh, when I've given feedback, when I've played games, the thing that I'm looking for, uh, and I've tried to boil this down into words, but it's going to be incredible moments in games. Those things that are different from just good mechanics or, or artwork that is interesting or even flavor text and story that pulls you in. I'm talking, I'm talking those moments that make you feel like you've just solved the puzzle or accomplished the goal or the dice rolled in a way that you never could have imagined, right? It's those stand-up moments, it's those cheer, it's those moments you share with your friends time and time again. You bring up when you bring new people into the fold, you talk about what just happened. Those are the things that for me, in a game start to make the difference. Of course, the mechanics need to be solid, the artwork needs to be good, and the most important mechanic of them all, flavor text, needs to be refined and, and built into the core of the game. But then all of that, all of that is still not good enough if the systems in play don't lead to or revolve around some oh-my-gosh moment, some mind-blowing experience. I wrote down a few of the games that uh, I've had those moments with, and I wanted to talk with him about you, tell stories, just share share some of my history of gaming, some of the things that uh, that I remember and like to like to share with friends when they show up. But I also thought it would be fun to have this thread be a thread full of those moments. I want to hear about the games that have elicited that degree of wow for you that degree, that experience, and these can be good or bad. This doesn't mean that this is the biggest success that you ever had. I mean, it could be in Kingdom Death being crushed and torn apart and you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, wow. Those are also incredible moments, right? Depending on what you enjoy. I personally enjoy cascading failure and being uh, crushed alive while you're doing your very best to survive, but I wrote down a few of these stories. But the big reason for this video, the big motive for this video is share yours down below. What are the moments that have been incredible, that have hooked you to a game, that have made you stick with an experience? Or what are the moments that have made you purchase a game the moment you got done playing it at a convention or playtesting online? Uh, what does it for you? It'll be interesting to read and see the games that continually pop up, and it'll also be interesting to gauge and share this thread with publishers to be like, look, this is what some people are looking for. These are the moments. Can people describe your game in this way? Because if they can't, it's just going to be okay. And then it's going to cycle out of the collection. And so on and so forth. So, uh, Kingdom Death Monster. A game that a few of you have heard about here on the channel. Uh, I was thinking about what makes this game so mind-blowing. And it is beautiful and challenging and ambient, but... This game is also packed with so many moments that feel so good when you accomplish them. The most clear would be ripping off the lion testicles. I mean, everyone jokes about that one, right? It's the first showdown that you have. And if you get that perfect hit or that crit and you rip those things off and you get that card out of the deck and you're sitting there staring at a pair of lion balls, like that moment for a gaming group or even for an individual, that feels like you just accomplished the world. Uh, it is funny, it is hilarious, it is, uh, teaches you some game mechanics and elements, uh, and it's brutal. It is exactly what Kingdom Death represents and is. But there's two other moments in Kingdom Death that I've had um, that go to show that this game, that core game, the reason I love it so much, has so many, so many incredible stories. Every showdown, every hunt event, every journey you take is usually punctuated with these moments that stick in my mind that are visual cues or representations. The first time I fought uh, the Slender Man, uh, in a quarry that I, I have to be honest, I was not interested in uh, playing against the Slender Man at all. I don't like it when internet IPs and stuff come into my favorite board games. I want their lore and world and theme to be unique. But 
the Slender Man, eliciting this dark environment, rushing forward, blindingly swinging your sword all alone, right? This inky substance swallowing you up and this creature standing in the center of your village. That moment, that visual has never left me. The thematic ties, the story, the environment, it's so good. Or the first time I fought the Phoenix, the way that the Phoenix twists and warps and transforms the environment around you, rewinds you back and forth through time. I mean, that again, that first showdown I ever had, I was just sitting there reading cards and watching what was happening to my heroes or my survivors and just going, wow, we didn't see that coming. We didn't expect that. How could the creators twist this world in such a weird, immaculate way? And the fight continues in the same strand. I mean, this is the game that, above all, I think has elicited more memorable moments for me than almost any other game I've played. But, uh, let's continue. When I grew up, uh, Head and Foot was the family card game. It's not a very interesting game. It's fairly luck-driven. You have a deck of cards in the center for every person playing. You draw up 21, building... Uh, two stacks of cards, one in your hand, one on your ground. Your goal is to match sets, get straights, uh, get, get naturals or unnaturals uh, of cards all matched up of, of the same uh, same suit or same number. And you're, you're cycling cards throughout uh, everyone else's hand. Um, that game is a little bit luck-driven. It's not very strategic. Definitely has some strategy to it, but you know that there's a chance you just get screwed out of uh, what you're trying to do. So why is that game still one of my favorites? Why is that game that always elicits memories for me? Why is it a game that I grew up playing that my family loves? Well, it's very simple. The act of going from 20 cards in your hand to placing them all down on the table, discarding one or not even discarding one, playing them all down, going straight into your foot, drawing it up, and then continuing to play cards, that might be one of the best feelings I ever have in a card game period. I mean... Just that rush of knowing what you have, of having your hand so full of cards you can barely organize or hold them all, and then they all go down on the table and everyone's sitting around there going, whoa, you just played You just played three naturals, two unnaturals, went straight to your hand, have three jokers in there, two red threes, you need to get those out of your deck. But And then the crushing defeat, the crushing defeat of luck being against you, of not being able to get through your hand, the frustration of not being able to cycle cards or making the mistake of drawing up when you should have taken from the discard pile. It, again, it is not a brilliant game. It is not a perfect game. Uh, but it is a game that has those moments that stick with you, that remind you, that make you feel so tied to it. I would argue that Catan and Monopoly are similar in a lot of ways. Catan is usually fun for two people sitting at the table, the two people that are still in the competition by the end of the game. Because if you know the game, you can sort of read the room and know who's going to lose and who's going to potentially win by about midway through, or at least three-fourths the way through. Monopoly is the best game ever for the person that just drove everyone into bankruptcy. I mean, that is one of the reasons why people continue playing it, or why people enjoy playing it. They want to outthink, they want to outmath, they want that experience of crushing their friends. A lot of your older historic games, a lot of your games that elicit those moments will have similar identities, similar tropes, but they'll all come back to, at some point in this game, someone's going to have an incredible experience. And that means they're going to share it, they're going to want to play it again, they're going to want to get it back to the table. A few New Age games uh, that I've had uh, uh, incredible moments with. Uh, in the Hall of the Mountain King, uh, beautiful little game from Burnt Island Studios, uh, in this game, you're doing your very best to dig tunnels, uh, gather pillars, and erect them in the center of the board. Your tunnels cannot overlap with your friends, and there's this big lava flow in the center, and the closer you get to that, the more effective you're going to be at scoring points, you know, driving end game. You're trying to build and, and erect your monuments as close to that central point. And so, for me, I saw the opportunity and thought it would be very interesting to push forward and surround the lava flow with my own tiles, meaning that no one else could build in that central region. No one could score the most points possible. Uh, that proceeded to frustrate my friends to no end, but, uh, and Jan was there with me, he'll be there with me for most of these experiences, but that feeling, that moment of like, 
accomplishing something so dumb and ridiculous. Now, I came second place, and I was competitively in second place. If I'd known the game a little bit better, I could have probably positioned a bit better. Um, but yeah, that's just it's just another one of those moments that, uh, for me, was mind It was just so good, and I'm excited to get the game to the table again because I want to re-experience it. I want to continue pressing those buttons, seeing where the levers pull, uh, exploring what that kind of map and tile system has. Uh, Chinatown is going to be another one that Jan and I went head-to-head. -head. We actually both bought this game uh, the moment we stopped playing it with our friend. It is going to be a, uh, you know, a location building. It's sort of what Monopoly was supposed to be, uh, in a way. You're doing your very best to control different regions of Chinatown, establish your own shops, pair and link them together, uh, and bid and sell and bluff with everyone around the table. Uh, it is a buying and bidding game, so you're going to get a lot of restaurants and you're going to try to negotiate those, negotiate regional blocks, negotiate uh, the resources you have, the money that you have. The person at the end of the game to have the most money is going to be the victor. And in Chinatown, there was a very notable moment where Jan kept looking at me going, Jesse, I want that deal. And I just kept glancing at him going, no. And he said, I want that deal. And I said, I'll negotiate with you this way. And no, and it just never worked out. It never happened, and I won that game. Uh, and he was so frustrated with the idea of me not being willing to negotiate or bargain, but at the end of the day, my methodology, the, the deal that he wanted that would have been worse for me than it was for him, uh, you know, led to me securing victory. And so, uh, in a bidding or bluffing game, in a, in a game like that, in a bidding game like that, that degree of control, that, that weightiness when it comes to the strategy, when it comes to the negotiation around the table, that, again, it just felt so good. ISS Vanguard, one of the reasons I'm so sweet on, so excited about this game to arrive, uh, is because if you haven't watched the gameplay video yet, you should, but there was a point where uh, my hubris destroyed and devastated an ins entire civilization, like an entire ecosystem. I broke through the rock uh, exploring this forgotten planet, uh, opened it up, saw beautiful fungi and larvae and creatures and life in this barren wasteland, and then slowly the acidic atmosphere started consuming uh, and destroying and, and, and crippling this ecosystem that I'd broken through, and I couldn't do anything to save it. That moment, that moment was, you can literally see me on camera go from ecstatic and excited and exploring to like a drop and just just my stomach bearing what just happened. Um, Space Explorers, my favorite 4X game of all time. I mean, this is a boring-looking, chip-based, move move pieces across a board, slowly build your empire, write on a big sheet of, sheet of paper, keeping track of all the math, all the gear, all the equipment, all the upgrades you have. It's not a pretty game. But I remember when we first introduced the mechanic of mines, and... Everything's hidden information until you have a sonar, or radar, or you come in contact with him. And so I just floated a few out to my friend who I've played this game with a lot. Not a lot. Played the game with three or four times by this point. It was the only game that, that we had played together like this. Floated uh, those mines out there. And he came by and poked them. And then just... Just devastating his spaceships. Devastating the army that he was sending to my gate to take over my home planet. So that experience and that 4X game was so good. It was such a solidifying moment for me that I, I always dive back into that game trying to have more of that moment, more of that laugh your, you know, laugh your butt off, uh, smile and just look at the fear and, uh, and despair in your opponent's eyes. Scythe, we played through the entire campaign of Rise of Fenris, which was a beautiful story, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, th I think it was seven or nine episodes uh, and I followed the thematic tropes time after time again, meaning that if you've played, you know, The Rise of Fenris, there are moments in that game that rely on you following those thematic tropes, and I did really well because I was following them, and we got to one game session that no one else enjoyed. Uh, it ended in probably 20 minutes. I was laughing the entire time because I had these upgraded, souped-up movement abilities and weird faction abilities, and... I was just able to pop and basically teleport around the map, securing and, and closing off victory from everyone else. Uh, was it fair? Was it even? No. But, I mean, did it did it make me love that campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone was frustrated. Don't get me wrong. They would probably have different opinions of it for me. But here's the thing. I think 
that some of the greatest games, I, I would argue most of the greatest games of all time, have those moments. Whether they are thematic, mechanical, whether they're in your head or on the table, whether you're playing solo or with people, the response, the engagement. And so when I preview a game, when I'm doing uh, playtesting or development and talking with a publisher and trying to work out what makes a game good, what takes it from a solid mechanic system, a good story, beautiful artwork, to an amazing game, for me, a lot of it's going to come down to those incredible moments you can have. Those moments that you can't experience in any other format, right? It's the escape side of this hobby. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that is blindingly fascinating about this space and about other escape you know, ventures. Books that allow you to be absorbed into them, that shock you through the storytelling, uh, that unveil, unveil mysteries as you're reading them. Video games that do the same thing. I have Bioshock tattoos on my wrist because of the impact that that series had on me. I mean, would you kindly uh, remind me exactly what that was? Those of you that are watching, would you kindly let me know what your most incredible moments in games are? So, that's what I've been thinking about. I thought I'd just pose the conversation, share a few stories with you here the audience, and really, really uh, encourage you to, uh, to have a conversation with me. Because I'm curious. I'm curious what games you'll add to your list. Uh, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.